Come on now, pull yourself together. Slip, sir. Couldn't help it, sir. He just slipped in. He was dead before he went in. Get him up on the bank. Come on, keep this line moving. Perkins! Sir, take this stretch for a minute. Sir, sir, come on, keep this line moving. Keep moving there. Keep moving. Come on, round here, you know. Over the back there. Come on. Radio there. Sorry, sorry, I'm tired. We're all tired. Not like me, I'm a dream walking. Hang on, son, you'll be all right. You okay? Now keep moving at the back there. Some of your people want enough. Are you kidding? How is it, sir? Not too bad, Alan, not too bad. Is there much further to go? Uh, the rough guess, I'd say about 40 miles. If divisional headquarters haven't moved back again, Oh, I hate this damn filthy jungle. You ought to be glad of it. It's hiding you from the Japanese. Do you think they're watching us, Alan? I don't think so, sir. If they'd seen us, they'd have been on to us by now. Unless... Unless we're being tracked, so they can take us in strength. That's what I like, a nice, cheerful place. Do you think we can take a break now, sir? Some of the men are in pretty bad shape up there. It'd be in worse shape if the enemy caught up with us. He's right, Alan. Unless you want to do some more wounded, you must give him a couple of hours rest. Look, his hair is crawling with Japanese. Just two hours. All right, we can't stay here. We're a sitting target. Sergeant, take a couple of men and see what's ahead. Right, sir. Come on. Perkins, Turner. I want a last lap spurt from you two. Why, Miss Sarge, you had that the day before yesterday. Give it a minute. Give it a minute. said was, would you like to be a war correspondent? Oh, well, you're seeing the war anyway. Seeing it, you don't get a sight of them until they bloody one on you. Pardon me. Hastings! What the hell are you doing? I thought we'd take a breather, sir. Did you now? Well, get these men away from the back. They can rest until the sergeant gets back. Come on, move! Move! The only thing that's kept me going is the thought that sometime I'd stop. This is a wretched climb. <laughs> How can you better wear that collar in this heat? Why don't you lose it? Oh, I don't know. It helps the men. To... I think I'll keep it on. I was certainly ready to praise the Lord yesterday, but when you look found me, you'd have got back somehow. Yeah, somehow is the operative word. Now you got this far, thanks to you. What were you doing alone in the jungle, anyway? Thought it'd make a good story if I went out with a patrol. Nice kids. Hmm. Well, that's had it. Things look pretty black, don't they? That's putting it mildly. So this is what's left of a brigade. Brigade headquarters. We covered the retreat and then lost contact. You probably have later news than we do. Who, me? <laughs> oh, yes, of course. 
A war correspondent's supposed to know everything, isn't he? Well, Padre, as of this minute, I don't know where the enemy is. I don't know where our troops are. So I'm doing fine. Just fine. Lovely water, too. Yeah, a lovely hot chow. Right. Keep your eye on my eyes and I'll get back to the captain. Okay, sir. Keep under cover and don't move from here. Do you get me? We get you, sir. Right. Happy sort of bastard, isn't he? Hey, it's from Glasgow. Anything's a relief after that. Cool. What I wouldn't get for a pair of field glasses. Wanna make a recce? Recce me. Look at them lovely little darlings down at the pool. They don't show up in five minutes, we're moving off. There's trouble with the radio. Radio? How much trouble? Wilson's working on it now. What's wrong with it? Well, it seems to have packed up, sir. I said what's wrong well, with it? it? Water seems to have got me somewhere. What do you mean, somehow? Rain wouldn't put it out of action? No, sir. Wilson, you're telling me you dropped that set in the water? He didn't, sir. I did. That radio's on lifeline, Dawson. So you better get it going. Well, we'll fix it, sir. You better fix it! He does out of action, sir. You'll have to keep on bearing west. I'll do that, all right. The front's moving all the time. I shan't know if we're moving into enemy lines or our own. Our people will make a stand soon. Yes, but how soon? There must be hundreds of men out there cut off like us. I think we can get them all together. The sergeant's back. Right. Village up ahead, sir. How big is it? Oh, a few huts. Anybody there? Just a few Bundese villagers, sir. Seems okay. At least Perkins and Turner to watch out. Oh. Might be a good place to lie out for a while, sir. All right, you better get ahead of the column. Mr. Hastings can guide him in. Very good, come on, sir. let's go. Move, come on. Come on, Anna. Anna, double there. Anna, double. Come on, stand by to move off. Come on. Are uh, you two? I noticed that you near the front of the line. Do as you're told and keep in the center, unless you want to get hurt. Hey, right, come on, move. I don't know what it is about that fella. He certainly likes giving orders. I don't judge him too harshly. You've only got your own life to worry about. He's got over 30 others to consider. Now, where's the middle of the line? Give me that. It's been half an hour. He'll be back. You hope? Don't be so bloody gloomy. Don't be so fatal. Shh. I sleep the house, Sarge. Anything around? All oh, quiet, sir. Just the villagers. Seems okay. We're going in, Sergeant. Do you not think we should wait for the captain? No, Sergeant. We want to get the wounded under cover for a bit. All the same. We're going in, Sergeant. Sergeant will be my left flank. Okay. Hastings! Don't fire until we get the signal from the sergeant. I don't want you shooting across us. Son! You watch us. I'll give you three minutes to get into position. Might get the river. Right. Oh, you 
checking in. The sergeant and Mr. Hastings will cover us. I'll stand by. We're either finished or out of ammo. Will we move in, sir? No, I'll go in. Cover me. Come on, then. Let's take one. Get them! Bendish, you. Get 
There were ten of them in all, sir. Eight privates, a captain, and a full colonel. A colonel? And he had this on him. All right, Paul. Take two or three men and scout around. Okay, sir. Make sure no others escape from here. If you find anyone, you know what to do. Any of you speak English? English. Speak little. Good. What's your name? Suni. Now, come down here, Suni. How long Nippon been here? Please? Nippon, here. Long time? No long. She might mean they were here at sunrise, sir. Yes, she might. Any other villagers? Other people? Gone. All gone. We live. Oh, that's too bad. Sergeant, get them out of there and put the men in. What will we do with them, sir? Put them in the smaller start under guard for the time being. All right, come on, get this mobile out of here. Elliot, move them to Chin the up the highest tree, there. keep your eyes skinned. Thanks, sir. Son. Sir. You better post perimeter sentries, change them every half hour. Already been done, sir. Good. What do I do with this lid, sir? Who is he? Oh, he's making a dash for it with the Japanese officers, well, We sir. thought he'd been hit, sir, but he just stuck for cover. Well, put him in the big hut. Uh, yes, sir. Come on, horrible. Jump to it. Keep a good watch on it. Suni. You know that man? Not know. Not know. All right, go. Look what a full colonel we're doing here. Don't kick my teeth in, sir, but we are behind their lines, you know. Yeah, but a full colonel with only eight men out here. Why? If he could have a platoon or maybe a company, but eight men. I come to think of it, sir, it is a bit odd. This is no ordinary field map. You take a look at these markings. That blue line, those green squares and dots. Sir, the cook. At least that's what he calls himself. Once the nerve wouldn't start on the grab yet. Yeah, it's okay now, Perkins. Thank you, sir. And Perkins, see that we get some before you get yours. Yes, Sergeant. Pleasure, Sergeant. Guts. What about that Burmese? Why should he try to run away? Oh, maybe he was just scared stiff, sir. I saw the others, but they didn't try to beat it with the colonel. Oh, well, I'll study this later. In the meantime, you better clear away the debris. Take them into the jungle and have them buried in one grave, ours and theirs together. Make sure there are no traces. Get it done as quick as you can. Very good, sir. I'll tell the padre. Never mind about the padre. I don't want any nonsense about a service. My concern is the living, not the dead. Very good, sir. Right, burial party! Well? Just drying out the parts, sir. I'm uh, sorry about this, sir. You will be if you don't get it fixed. You know something? He can drop dead for my money. At least he knows what he's doing with a mess we're in. That's saying something. You will be if you don't get it fixed. After you with your luck. Anyway, I'll drop the bleeding thing into the water. You are in. Oh, rollocks. Has he said anything? No, sir. Speak English? I said, do you speak English? What were you doing with the Japanese? Why did you try to get away with them? You going to answer? Doesn't seem to understand, does he, sir? If he doesn't, he's no use to us. Take him away. Come on. And shoot him. No, no! Please, sir. Talking, aren't we? Aren't we? Yes, sir. Well, that's better. What's your name? Arkambosa. What were you doing here? I live here, sir. Don't lie, the other villagers don't know you. I mean, I live near here, sir. What was the Japanese colonel doing here? He was asking me questions. What sort of questions? What sort of questions? About your troops, sir. What did you tell him? Nothing. Naturally, sir. Naturally. Was he talking to you in Japanese? No, I can't speak the language, sir. You couldn't speak English either. I was frightened there. Now I'm telling only the truth. I don't think you know the meaning of the word. We found this wad of money on him, sir. Have you ever seen this map before? No. 
Come here, look at it. You know nothing of this map? I know nothing, sir. What's your name? I've already told Answer you. Answer my question! How can Bob, sir? What is Singyu? Singyu, it's a small <laughs> village near here. How far away is it? Oh, it's only a few miles away. No, you're wrong. It's over 150 miles away. If you lived here, you'd know that. Well, I haven't lived here very long, sir. How long? Only a few weeks. Where do you come from? Rangoon. What was your address in Rangoon? 19 R. Pound Street. I had a small business. Why did you come here? I wanted to get away from the Japanese. How are you going to live? I have money. This money? Yes. It's rather a lot, isn't it? I'm not a poor man. The notes are new. Well, there's nothing unusual in that if I got them from a bank. No. No, not if you got them from a bank. Tell me again, what was your address? You heard me your address in Rangoon. You've forgotten it so soon. You confuse me, sir. I confuse you, do I? And I suggest you made it up on everything else you've told me. No, sir. I suggest that both before and after the invasion you worked for the Japanese. No, that's not true. Your only purpose in this area was to supply the Japanese with military information. No. You arranged to meet that colonel here, didn't no. you? No. You gave him information and he paid you. And that's no, no, that's not true. It is true. Like all your kind, you don't care whose life you sell as long as it's not your own. You only speak what you think. You, you have no proof. I'll get my proof. You're going to talk, do you understand? How do you tell me all you know about that map? Or I'll shoot you. The British don't do things like that. I wouldn't count on that. You wouldn't Shut up. Up. I'm giving you 15 minutes to make up your mind. Either you decide to talk, or you're giving yourself 15 minutes to live. I've already told you the truth. If you change your mind, I'll give you my word that you can go free. Don't take your eyes off me. I won't, sir. Oh, I've seen to everything, sir. The dead are being buried now. Good. Any luck in there, sir? I'm not convinced he knows something about that map. Maybe a tough nut to crack. Well, look, if you'd care to leave him with me and I come No. I'll find out my own way. Well, regarding the villagers, sir, are we going to feed them? They're still under guard, you know. No, let them out. Tell them to go about their business. Very good, sir. You. Sir? Where's your rifle? Well, I left it in the hut, sir. Now, you listen to me. If I ever see you without your rifle again, I'll set you loose out there without food, arms, or ammunition. You can die the death you're asking for. Now, get it. Quick! Yes, sir. That goes for all of you. No deed, boy. Where's that going? The ammo is asked for more bedding, sir. Where is it? He's in there, sir. latest instruments. Dress it. Use this little bandage uh, as possible. Doctor. <coughs> All right. All right. Take it easy, Porter. You're going to be okay. No, Shema. I've had it. Try and sit up. No, not you. Come, Doc. Take it easy. Take it easy. One less sack of potatoes to carry. Any of us can do Max except watch and wait, and perhaps pray. Pretty rough, huh? Yes, it's pretty rough. Got any more help? Help I needed supplies. I've amputated a man's leg with a bayonet and dug a bullet out of another man's shoulder, all without proper anesthetic. Still got morphine? A little. Save it. Only use it on the men who have a chance to live. A dying man feels he has as much right to it as anyone. Look, John, I'm not going to tell you our job, but you're going to have to give it to them straight. How do you tell a man he's going to die so he can't have any more drugs? Just like that. You owe them the truth, they'll respect you for it. It's no good giving them illusions about getting back to our own lines. You give them something to hope for and may keep them alive. Only if the hopes are justified. Now just a minute. We do stand a chance of getting back. 
Some of us, maybe. If you want to grab a rest, I've taken over the big hunt. We've rather commandeered this one for our own use. It's a little nearer the morphine. Aye, aye. You, heat beautiful. Me go for you. You go with me. She don't understand the Indian talk. Oh, you distress me, Herbert. Love speaks any language. Hey. Me strong, like tiger. In mangy Malo like a tomcat. Oh, turn it up. Malo me me, me carry wash. Why don't you leave her alone? No, 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 no fight. We, we go walk. Malo Help Malo Bangor Malo. burn me. What the hell do you think you're doing? Nothing, sir. Come here. Go. If that ever happens again, I personally will beat the living daylight out of you. Wasn't he a bit of fun? Pull out her back. Come on. I saw it. <laughs> go after them, quick. Sergeant Davis Turner. Come in, Lisa. No, no. Go in there with him. Right. Go in there after them. I'll draw him. If you spot him, give him a good bust. I don't understand it. I scouted around for a hell of a time without seeing anything. Ah, they're difficult to spot, sir. They're experts in jungle fighting, you know. What were they doing here, Alan? Chasing us. Well, that's my guess. They came back to look for that colonel. That's the case we're falling. Four move off in 20 minutes. Right. Right. Well, well, have the men standing by as soon as they have their food. Very good, sir. Oh, wait a minute, Alan. Any movement now of those wounded is most certainly out of the question. I've given an order. Alan, you've been in that hut. You saw them. Hardly, I've got no choice. I know what sort of condition the men are in. I know we're all deadbeat. But the enemy are on to us now. They'll be back in force. We've got to move off. That's all there is to it. Sir. He hasn't said a word, sir. Now then, Mr. Akimbar, I'm not going to waste any more time with you. You talk or you die, the choice is yours. Now. What do you wish me to say? You're with that Japanese colonel. I want to know why. I also want to know the markings on that map. How can I explain what I do not know? I shall count up to five. If you don't answer, I shall shoot you. Here, now. One. Two. Alan. Three. Four. Five. I didn't think you could go through with it. Bring him outside. Son! Come on, horrible. Son! Sir. Our friend here doesn't believe that I'll shoot him. I've got to convince him. There's only one way to do that. Those villagers, take out two of their men and line them up in front of a firing squad. And you can watch, Akimbao. Have you gone stark raving mad? Alan, you're bluffing. No, Padre, I'm not bluffing. You heard me, Sergeant. Take two of the villagers and put them in front of a firing squad and wait for my order. Wait, Sergeant. Wait a moment. You can't be serious. You just can't shoot them down like that in cold blood. I'm in command here. That doesn't give me the right to shoot civilians. Carry on, Sergeant. Sergeant, it's not my place at the moment to tell you what to do, but in the name of mercy, I ask you to wait for a few moments. 
Very well, sir. But only for a few moments. Don't be insolent. You'll wait for just as long as the Major orders you. Captain Langford's my commanding officer, sir. Not the Padre. Oh, right, Sergeant Roy. Now, you listen to me, Ivan. You're tired. You're not in any fit condition to make a decision like this. Don't you see? I'm doing what I have to do. No more, no less. I believe the markings on that Japanese map are important. I believe this informer knows where they are, and I'm going to make him talk. And I'm not concerned with the methods I use. Yes, but two civilians. Why, in the name of reason, why? If you want my opinion... I don't believe your opinion will make any difference. You're going to get it anyway. Two people's lives depend on what's... Go ahead, Sergeant. Are you good, sir? Sergeant. This will be a war crime. Do you realize that? Do you know what you're doing? I sir, but I'm not so sure that you do. Speak I'm to sorry, me. sir. I've no wish to appear insubordinate, but Captain Langford's my commanding officer. He's the one to decide what's to be done, no one else. You've forgotten me, Sergeant. No, oh, you've got nothing to do with this. I'm a witness and I'm a newspaper man. Aye? Well, we'll worry about that when we get back. In the meantime, the CO's got us this far, and I'm staying with them the whole way, no matter what happens. And if I'd thought otherwise in the last two weeks, none of us would be standing here now. And I reckon that goes for the rest of the men, too, sir. Just you try them. Come on, Dad. I think I'm going to need you. You come, sir. It's the Brigadier. Alan, supposing this man isn't an informer? I'm convinced that he is. Well, at least give him a chance to explain himself. Already done that. No, you haven't. You've insisted he gives you information he may not possess. Is that what you call giving him a chance? Is that your grounds for shooting these two poor devils? I've got no time to do anything else. You don't mean that, Alan. You don't mean you can't give these people time to plead for their lives. I mean just that. Just exactly that. Good God, Padre, this is war. And in a war, the man with the gun must always believe he's right. If he thinks otherwise, he's got no business being in uniform. A few million Jews that disagree with you. Look, this map can annihilate an army. It can also save them. How big is an atrocity? Two lives, 20 lives, 20,000 lives? Look, all I'm concerned about is my own people. I don't care about anybody else. You've seen too much killing. Too damn much to be an effective command. At least you agree I am in command. How would you feel if the enemy walked into your backyard and shot your family out of hand? Oh, don't be so bloody childish. You can't stop in the middle of a wholesale retreat and have a cosy discussion on the ethics of war. So, every British officer is entitled to take the law into his own hands. By my reckoning, he has no choice. Don't kid yourself. We're fighting because we have to, Alan. We should kill only when we're forced to. Oh, don't wrap it up for him, Padre. Give it to him straight. Tell him it's murder. All right. You've made your point. Now, look. Your job is to report the war. That's all anyone ever asked you to do. Lecture about it afterwards, but don't try to conduct it. And as for you, Padre, don't you preach at me. If you want help, enlist God's aid. We can use it. Firing squad ready, sir. Right, sir. You know the trouble with you people? You're so busy raising your hands in horror, you've got all your principles mixed up. At least we've got some. Oh, yes, you've got some. You don't mind when a bomber pilot presses a button and kills a few hundred civilians. You don't mind murder from a distance, so long as you personally are not involved. If you can't bear to look, you turn your heads the other way. Honey? Not shoot, please. Please. Not shoot, please. No shoot. No. No, please, not shoot. No, Balopane. Padre. Balopane. No this shoot. Is not a please. Not shoot, please. Please, not shoot, please. You stop. Not shoot. Not shoot. Akimba, you can save these people. Right, carry on, Sergeant. Uh, on guard! You're next. All right, I tell, I tell. I'll tell. Take him into the hut, Bendish. I want you.
You too, Sergeant. Right, follow. Davis, you, Davis. Right <laughs> The deaths of these Burmese are entirely my responsibility. If anyone's head rolls when we get back, it'll be mine. May God have mercy on you, sir. Please, sir, can I get, get over there. Work for the Japanese is finished now. If they ever find out that you talk, your life won't be worth that much, you understand? I understand. So your best policy is to do all you can to help us? Yes, I will tell you all you want to know. You arranged to meet that Japanese officer here, didn't you? Yes. What for? To tell him what I knew about your troop movements. Ah, uh, you dusty weak. No, Sergeant, leave this to me. You're paid for the information. Not so much in money. I was to have a position in the Japanese military administration of Burma. All nicely worked out, wasn't it? Now, you've seen this map before. If you say you haven't, I'll pick up this revolver and I'll blast your guts out. Yes, I have seen it before. What's it mean? It, it shows details of a major Japanese operation to be launched in two weeks' time. Come here. What do those signs mean? The, the blue, the red, and the black markings show what they know of your position, and the green markings show how they think your forces will be in two weeks' time. Sergeant, come up here, Matt. Sir. What was that thick white line? That, that, that shows where the Japanese attack will take place. Let's see where they're up to. I don't, sir. They're cutting in on either side of our main force. The least pressure on the front, and we'll stay put thinking their supply lines are too far extended. All the time, they're moving in behind us. Surely our mob will think of that one, sir. No, no, they won't. The enemy will be moving through some of the thickest jungle in the world. No commander at that stage would think this move likely. So it's pretty bad, then, sir. Yes, it is, Sergeant. By the time our intelligence get wind of this, be too late to move out. Look, you, you don't suppose this could be another pack of lies? No, no, he's telling the truth. This map confirms it. Hey, you. I'm not going to put a guard on you any longer, but I advise you in your own interest not to try to escape. Oh, no, sir. If you will let me, I will serve you very well. Very well indeed, sir. Take him out. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Sergeant. Sir. I wanted you to take that man into the jungle and kill him. Then have him buried and see they make a good job of it. I'm only doing this because this map is vitally important. The Japanese must know we have it or understand it. With that man alive, there's just a chance he'll find out. You think he'll run to them, sir? No, I don't think he'll run to them. But if they catch him, he must certainly talk. And that's a risk we can't take. How's he do I want, sir? Do you think we'll be able to get this information through, sir? Well, that's going to be mainly up to you, Sergeant. Yes, sir. From this end, we'll have to rely on that radio being fixed. Now we'll have to get our fingers crossed then, won't we? I suppose it's no good me telling you that I was right. The men are getting ready to move on. That's right, I gave an order. Listen, Alan, I've got a hut full of wounded out there to say nothing of the brigadier. All of them are seriously ill and can't be shifted at this moment. Nevertheless, we're moving. And what about the rest of us? For days now, we've had little food and less sleep. You're asking us to do the impossible. I'm not asking, John. I'm ordering you to do what is vitally necessary. Would a couple of hours make all that difference? A couple of hours. One hour. Every hour is critical. It's critical for the wounded, too, Captain. At this stage, I'm not worried about the wounded. What does that mean, exactly? It means they're not coming with us. What? You can't do that in your mind. Neither can I jeopardize the lives of 30 fit men for... Do you realize what this will mean to them? 
It won't be the first time the retreating army has left us wounded behind. Yes, but in different circumstances. Now look, Padre. There must be 20,000 or more of our troops cut off out here in the jungle. If every officer in the command thought only of the wounded, you can write a lot of them off. It's against all the principles of humanity. Principles at a time like this! I don't see anything wrong in having principles. You don't? And I'll make you see. Now look, there's 40 miles or more of dense, hard jungle out there separating us from survival. The Japanese are out there mopping up. Your life, all our lives, depend on us keeping on the move. That's our only chance. It's a hard, sickening, but unavoidable decision. I've made my decision. I'm staying with the wounded. I'm with you, Doctor. I won't be responsible for deserting those men. You think I've decided this in five minutes? I've thought about nothing else for the last two days. The whole batch of us will be moving at the pace of the slowest walking wounded. I've seen those poor bastards doing their best with the stretchers. Struggling when they're practically out on their feet. No doubt they're prepared to carry them for as long as you want them. No, it's a burden that's become intolerable. I've got to get the fit back if it's the last thing I do. Why don't you put it to the men, Captain? I imagine they'd have something to say about it. We don't ask the men what to do in the army. Brigadier, it's here. You shouldn't have moved, sir. Paul, what the... Oh, don't blame Paul. I ordered him. Don't fuss. I'm perfectly capable of deciding whether I'm in a fit state to move or not. Of course, sir. That's my job. Well, Doctor, you know how things are. Doesn't really matter anyway, does it? Cigarettes, sir. Thank you. Are you... are you staying here the night? That's what we're deciding now, sir. I see. Then I've been asked to come over here at an opportune moment. Ah, oh, sir? Yes. By the wounded. Well, <laughs> we've been having a little discussion amongst ourselves. We've decided we're not doing very much to help. There's not much you can do, sir. Oh, oh. but there is. You see, we all realize that as things are, you're not going to make it. We don't want to be responsible for your capture, so we want you to go on without us. Well, just a minute, sir. Our decision was unanimous. You are to go on without us, Alan. Those are my orders. I'll do as you say, sir. I don't think I need to tell you how we're going to feel about this. And you, Doctor. I order you to leave us. Forget us few here and remember the hundreds who will want your help back at headquarters. You understand? I understand, sir. Good. Come on, let's get you back. Oh, before I forget, you might leave us one pistol. Sufficient ammunition. It's a small thing, I know, but I... Wouldn't want it to slip my memory. One pistol's not going to be much use to defend yourself with. Huh? I'm sorry, Padre. We won't be needing it for defense. Alan, perhaps you'll come over with me. I'd like to discuss your plans. Right away, sir. Elkins, Simpson, grab a couple of space and get to that clearing behind the hut. Get back as quick as you can. Who was it, Sarge? The informer. He tried to get away. How's it going over here, eh? Dried every part like it was my own baby, Sarge. Oh, well, let's hear your baby cry, and that's what we want. Come on, get out of there. Get your packs on. You were told to move quarter of an hour ago. Come on, hurry up now. Steady now, sir. Sit him down over there, Sergeant. Get me a stretcher. No, no, no fuss. Let me sit down here. I'll be all right. Achilles. Sunray leader to Achilles. Yes, I understand that. Don't forget the 3rd Battalion is on your right flank. Sunray leader to Achilles. I'm finished up. Roger. Roger. Out. We'll go. Out. A company. 
Sunray leader to Zebra. Oh, it's working, sir. We've got it working. Well done. Well, Set it up in the hut and stand by the transmitter. The transmitter? That's right. I've got an urgent Time message. Well, well, I thought you only wanted to know where they were. You mean that transmitter's not working? Only the receiver, sir. And get it working. Get that transmitter working. <laughs> Japanese, sir. On here. They're just on the outskirts. How many? I only saw one, sir, but it's probably a patrol. Right, get your packs off. Right. Sergeant, everybody packs off. Off? Yes, if it's a patrol, they'll be watching us right now. I want them to know where we're staying. Staying? Yes, but I thought you How much would you fork at your pack off? Aren't you going after them? I don't want them to know we've seen them. For God's sake, they'll pick us off as they like. I don't think they will. It's a chance we'll have to take. Right, come on, get your packs off. Get them off. And sit down. Keep the rifles at the ready. Sit down. Sure, if it's a patrol, it's on the cars, they'll be back with reinforcements. Exactly. We've all gone, they'll chase after us. If we stay, they won't realize the sergeant and his party have slipped away. That'll give him the initial run he needs. I think he'll agree, sir, that in the circumstance... He's dead. He was a fine man. Yes, he was a fine man. And he knew. He knew there's only one way to fight a war, any war. With the gloves off. Everything's ready, sir. Good, sergeant. Take two privates, the party of the doctor and our newspaper friend. Get your kits ready immediately. Sergeant, come with me. All right, sir. Now, this is where I asked him at divisional headquarters to be. I'll find them, sir. Even if you don't, keep your eyes skinned for another British unit trying to find its way back. If you make contact or get through, let me know over the radio. That's a pity we couldn't author the copy of this map, sir, just in case. Well, there's not enough time to make them. But see to it that each member of your party memorizes enough of this to give a brief outline to division, then destroy it. If you're attacked or have to break up, some of you might make it alone. I can tell you this much, sir. If we don't make it, it won't be for want of time. I know that, Sergeant. Now, your party. If any of them tire or are wounded, if for any reason at all can't go on, it'll leave them behind. That's an order. No, it's hard, but under no circumstance you must you carry them with you. Aye, sir, I'll know what to do. What about you and the rest of the men, sir? We'll stay behind and defend the radio until we get the transmitter working. Uh, I've been with you for quite some time now, sir. I'd just like you to know that... Oh, well, I, I think you know what I'm trying to say anyway. I think I do. You're a good soldier, Sergeant. Your loyalty has meant a great deal to me. Thank you, sir. With your permission, sir, I'll be moving off now. Goodbye, Sergeant. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Here, you gentlemen should be ready by now. Yes, sir. How do you know it's important to get away at once? We're not going, Alan. That is, Max and I. What do you mean, you're not going? I made it quite clear you were to go. We're making it quite clear we're staying. I'm sorry, Alan. We don't enjoy overruling a decision of yours, but our minds are made up. And you, Doctor? I'm going. No more supplies? What do you send me? If I get back, maybe I'll be a doctor again. Now, look, this is a stupid idea. I'll give it you straight. Our chances of getting away from here are about ten to one against. Exactly. And as we'll be of no use to here, you thought you'd give us a chance of getting out of it. You are no use to me here, so why don't you get the hell away? If we go with a sergeant, we may delay him. I at least am older and less fit. You give us a rifle each and send two of the younger soldiers in our place. You take a rifle, partner? That's what I said. But you're a priest. Yes. You'd better pray for me. You'd be more use back at headquarters. No, I don't think so. They're short of doctors. They're not short of priests, no. My place is here. I think you're wrong, Padre. But I know what you mean. I'm not a very religious man myself, but uh, I think I speak for the rest of the lads when I say it's good to know you're around. I appreciate that, Sergeant. You know, a Padre in the army is the one person a man can talk to without having to do it in triplicate. And you, said, what about you? Up to now, I've just written about all this. Now I can be part of it. I've often wondered what happens at times like these. Now's my chance to find out. You serious? Is this your only reason for staying? No, there's another. And this doesn't mean that we condone your past actions for one minute. But you've got important information. How you got it's another matter. But you'll get it to headquarters a damn sight quicker without us two tagging along. You better select two more men. Get away immediately. Very good, sir. I'll be out in a moment, sir. I have a word with you. Yeah, what is it? Alan, I was wondering if I ought to go with the sergeant. You? You're needed here. I know, but it's a bit changed now, isn't it? I mean, you've got two more officers to take over. Officers? Here. Max is a war correspondent. The part is an officer. He's also a priest. But don't misunderstand me, Alan, but I'm no more capable of You're leading... You're a trained than... infantryman. I'm sorry you don't understand. I shouldn't have brought it up. Now, get this straight, Paul. If I get knocked out of this, you're the correct officer to take over. That's the only reason I'm keeping you here. Yes, yes, of course. Now, get sentries around this village at a half-mile radius. All in trees. I want to know immediately if they see anything. Yes, sir. 
Good night, Doc. Same to you. Don't worry, Paul. Things are never as bad as they seem. Well, it's all yours, Padre. Paul knows where the medical stores are, or what's left of them. Good speed. Alan? I'll see you at headquarters. At headquarters. I'll wave goodbye. Bye, Sarge. Thanks for nursing me. Ah, oh, I'll have some beer waiting for you, you drunken sassanac. Come on, hurry up, all of you. Come on. Kijk eens je terug, hè? Je nooit op. Is toch nou? Sta naast je mail. I suppose. Padre, I... I made rather a fool of myself back there, didn't I? No, I don't think so. I'm no coward, Padre, believe me or not. If you're like me, you're just frightened. We all are. If they're staying behind, it seems so senseless. Supposing we get the transmitter working. Supposing? Supposing we get the plan to headquarters. It all seems so senseless then. Alan doesn't like to have all his eggs in one basket. If the sergeant fails, we might succeed, and vice versa. It's worth a try. There's so much I want to do with my life. To have it all end out here, right in the middle of nowhere, it seems... Oh, I don't know. I think you're rather jumping your fences. Well, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? You're no fool, Padre. Tell me, what do you think is going to happen? Why, let me just wait and see. see. Waiting that gets me. If I got with a sergeant, at least I'd... Well, I'd have something to get on with. For the moment, yes, but you'd never have forgiven yourself. Well, it doesn't matter now, does it? I didn't get the opportunity. Neither did we. Yes, you did. You chose it. You chose to stay. To give two younger men a chance. We didn't want to run in the future, afraid to look back on the past. In other words, I am a coward. No, I'm saying anything but that. 
In my opinion, a coward is a man who does have courage, but thinks only of himself and runs all the same. There are many such men in life who turn their backs on it. Not because they can't face it, but because to turn their heads away is easier. There are brave men who do things for others and act for them. And they know very little fear and can easily surmount it. But the bravest men of all are those who, while desperately wanting to run away, frightened out of their wits, turn deliberately to face danger. Such men command respect. Because they turn fear, raw fear, into cold, determined courage. Yes, you're right, of course. It's just bloody hard, that's all. ちょっとで、いろんなとこ、ひだ、今どれました。あ、道が出た。ここから東三マイル倍路ね。あ、敵が今ぞ。お、電話ただちに。出発。出発。出発。出発。出発。Ajax to Sunray leader. Are you receiving me, please? Over. All right, Zebra. I'll do as you ask. But don't forget, you'll be coming up on the left of A Company. See that you cover them. And whatever you do, don't pull back or you'll be... There's nothing for us, sir. He's just not getting us. Oh, I keep trying. Dawson, report to Mr. Hastings. Ajax to Sunray. We want you to relieve to receiving me, right, please? Sir. Over. Ajax to Sunray leader. Are you receiving me, please? Over. Well, are you satisfied? Should I be? You've had things very much your own way so far. Not apparently with you and Max. No, not with us. It's very difficult for us to forget what's happened, Marilyn. Difficult to understand how you could bring yourself to shoot those two Burmese. Yeah. I'm sorry about that, Padre. Sorry, that is, that you had to witness it. But not sorry for the act itself. Oh, what are two lives when there are so many at stake? Life and death meant a great deal to the two who had to die. And more, much more to the thousands will be given a chance to live. Ajax the Sunray leader. Ajax the Sunray leader. Are you receiving me, please? Are you receiving me? Relief sentry, sir. I'll stay on here a bit longer, Dawson. Relieve one of the perimeter men. Well, if you don't want me saying so, I think it's about time you had a break. You've been on it. You're me. What to do? They're coming, sir. About third hill. Where? About a mile due east. Look out, someone crossing a clearing on the side of a hill. They're coming this way, sir. Well, tell the lookout to try and keep on to them. You yes, get every man standing by. Any man who can fire a gun, wounded or otherwise, I'll tell Captain Langford. What? Oh, no, no. Ow, 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 ow. Japanese are heading this way, a mile distant. From what direction? The lookout's head due east. That means they've taken the same route as we took to get here. They'll probably come down the river. In that case, they have to come pretty nearly in single file. I can think of cleaner places for an ambush. Nevertheless, we're going to try it. If we can reach that clearing first, they command the whole river. I'm leaving you with eight men, the Padre and Max. Get the rest out in two emergency sections and bring in the perimeter sentries right away. Right. I want to come with you. No, Max. Just for the story. No, you want to stay in these huts. You too, Padre. If anything goes wrong, I want this place to look deserted. You trying to get that message through? Just having another check, sir. Emergency sections ready. Good. I suggest two men to every hut, the odd man in here. We're short of ammunition, but we'll have to hold out as long as we can. Right, sir. And if they take any of us prisoner and bring us back to this village, even if we're in front of them, we do open fire. And that's an order. I can't do much, Alan, but I shall certainly pray. At times like this, we should try anything. Fight! You in with the wounded, Dawson and Wilson in there. I think we'd better get inside, Padre.
Here they come, sir. Stand by. Stand by. Now hold your fight. We're practically on the It's only six, sir. We can easily cope with this little love. Wait. They're trying to draw our fire. We might be part of a larger force, and they want to know our position and strength. What's he doing? Can we cover him, sir? No, hold your fire. He's trying to save us, give our position away. Crazy. You must keep inside. I've told you. Stay inside. No, inside. We go to the jungle. But you can't go into the jungle. 
You must keep in the hut. You'll be safe in hut. Safer in jungle. Village no good no more. British, Japanese, Japanese, British. Nobody good. Ajax to Sunray leader. Ajax to Sunray leader. This is urgent. This is urgent. Are you receiving me, please? Over. The villagers have gone. Gunfire frightened them. Over an hour since it's stopped. Somebody moving, sir. Don't leave that window. Over by the animal pounds. This is urgent. This is urgent. Are you receiving me, please? Over. What is your rank? I'm a lieutenant. A full lieutenant? Second lieutenant. You will answer my questions, please. I have nothing to say to you. Possibly not at the moment. However, I must persuade you to answer. Whatever the questions, I have nothing to say. It is my belief that when your forces came to this place, you came across a high-ranking Japanese officer and some soldiers. What happened to them? My name is Hastings. I'm a second lieutenant. My number is... Think it over, lieutenant. I'm not a soldier. I can't tell you anything. And... Um. What about the captain in God's army? I am a major in the British Army. You will tell me the truth about the missing Japanese officer. Come on, shy, oh, stand on, yoy! Hi! I did! Through the okay! You will go with the guards. Can't you do something about this man? He's seriously wounded. The wounded will be attended to in due course. Uh, maybe too late. I'm sorry, but there are more important things to attend to. Haven't you forgotten something? Not that I'm aware of. Stand up! It is customary for a prisoner of war to salute a superior enemy officer. Possibly. It's the word superior that I quarrel with. I am Major Yamazaki of the Japanese intelligence. I offer you a cigarette. You will say you prefer your own. So I will not invite your refusal. Just say what you came to say. 
It is a pity, Captain, we are on opposite sides in this war. After all, the Japanese Navy played an important part in helping you win the last one. Come now. We are both gentlemen. We can discuss this matter amicably. If you discuss what you want to discuss, I'm not stopping you. A commendable attitude, but unhelpful. What do you expect? To which unit do you belong? Please answer. Very well. And I will tell you. You are from the 7th Battalion of the South Riding Regiment. So what? Tell me, Captain. When you first came to this village, what did you find? Jungle. I will presume you misunderstood me. What did you find? These empty huts. But when the occupants returned? There were no occupants. How strange. You British have been in Burma many years. Should they have reason to be frightened of you? Well, as a minister of our troops for yours. How long have you been in Burma? About a year. Come. I have something to show you. Please come. I can use force. Good luck, sir. Tell him to go and get stuff. Heroism or stupidity? You tell me. There was nothing to gain from it. Perhaps he feels better. Tell me, Captain. Are you married? Yes. Children? Two. My wife and child are in Tokyo. I do not know whether I will ever see them again. A pleasant country, England. I was attached to the intelligence at our London embassy for several years. I am a great admirer of English literature. In my home, I have a most excellent library, including some of Byron's original works. does not have to happen. Taylor, get on with it, Alan. Well, what are you waiting for? Get on with it! A high-ranking Japanese officer is missing. It is known he was to keep an appointment in this village. That is the last we heard of him. What happened to him? I don't know! We will stay this for a moment more. Yashime! Ah, Jewish story. Yes, sir. Got it. You also get up. We will try another question, Captain. I'm all right, Alan. I'm all right. Why don't you do what the hell you're going to do with us and get it over? Tell me, Captain. A man of your fighting experience. Why should you fight for this village? We weren't fighting for the village. We were cut off from our main unit. Why stay here? We weren't going to until you came along. You could have got away before I got here. My duty was to follow rear guard action, not to run every time I saw the you enemy. You deliberately decided to keep your unit here, didn't you? Look, what difference does it make? It what makes this difference and poses this question. Why? After having fought your rear guard action, should you decide to stay here instead of catching up with your main unit? It was a good defensive position. Is that your explanation? Not entirely. My men were exhausted. We had some wounded. You will still have to convince me. We stayed and fought because we couldn't go on any longer. I told you that. And that won't do, Karen. It won't do. Inside. Oh. God's sake, help this man. He'll be helped. But first, you will help me. You do not strike me as a grossly incompetent officer. I'm not interested in your opinion. But I am in yours. Stand up and face me. Now answer this. What was the reason for your sudden collapse after a well-fought and fierce resistance? You already know the answer to that. We ran out of ammunition. Precisely. But I wanted you to give me the answer. Would any experienced officer take a stand behind enemy lines knowing he would eventually run out of ammunition? Rather than fight on the move, yes. No, Captain, no. Such an action would not be defensive. 
It would be suicidal. I've given you my explanation. It isn't good enough. Now, let me offer you one. Supposing, just supposing you did run across this high-ranking Japanese officer. I'd have killed him. And buried him, possibly. Why bother to do that? If this Japanese officer had been carrying vital information, it puts a different complexion on the matter, doesn't it? If I'd found vital information, the first thing I'd have done would have been to get it back to my headquarters. You may have done that, for all I know. That is why it would pay you to hide such evidence as the dead Japanese officer. If this information had been so vital, I presume it would have been in code. So how the hell would I understand it? You have a strong point there. That is the one feature that baffles me. However, in view of your inadequate answers so far, I must take the utmost precautions. I've given you my explanations. I'm a prisoner of war, and I intend to answer no further questions. You are a strange people. You decide to fight a war, and then try to bind yourselves to rules of conduct because it suits your purpose. May I point out that you started this war? But who started the war against the Sudanese, or the Indians, or the Boers? Did you have any rules for war then? No. But now that you have someone else just as big as you, now that you are not fighting spears with guns, you want a code of conduct. This is total war, Captain. No quarters asked, no quarters given. Well? My men are searching the jungle for the Japanese officer. If I find him dead, there are various actions I can take. I think the most effective will be to concentrate on your fellow officers, starting with a young lieutenant. You're wasting your time. We shall see. Let me make myself clear, Captain. I intend to get this information, and you're going to give it to me. If you cooperate... You are talking about total war. If you were in my place, would you cooperate? What I must do, I must do. Now I will send in your friends, and you will ask their advice. You will tell them how. If you do not talk, they will be executed without delay. Not yourself, Captain. Just your friends. I trust you will not be too embarrassed explaining that you are going to let them die whilst you yourself are going to live. You will excuse me. You, inside. You three remain here. You're right, Adam. Yeah, I'm all right. Wilson's in pretty bad shape. He caught it toward the end of the fighting. I wish I knew more about these things. Give me the pack. Mike! Mike! Shut up, Medicine! He thinks you're going for the radio. I tried it once. Medicine! Wounded! Where is it? What's it? What is it? Alan. Give me a hand, will you? Yeah. What's been happening? I was about to ask you the same question. What have they done with Paul? Nothing so far. That's the way with these bastards. They make you sweat by waiting for it. I ask you again, Lieutenant, what happened to the Japanese officer? Go to hell. Skewo Kedeko. I ask you for the last time. Very well, then. Get up. what you might call a dress rehearsal. We'll go and tell your friends how it feels. Toy Yeti. Well, Todd Johnson making a dash for it. Nil. No. You 
We can get a hundred yards. You think the sergeant got through it? And he's hardly had time to get back to our HQ. The only hope is that he catches up with another unit. What do you think they're going to do with us? Your guess is as good as mine. Yeah? Well, I've got one or two very nasty, sneaky suspicions. I read in a book once where wars are necessary to reduce the population. Well, here's one bit of population that doesn't want to be reduced. He's coming round. All right, Wilson, you'll be all right. You'll be okay, boy. What? What's happened? We've been taken prisoner. Uh -oh. All that? That's a healthy bit of news to, to wake up to. Is the radio still intact, sir? Yes, yes, I think so. It's an awful, awful thing. Sarge made it. He might be sending out a message to us right now. It's like a flipping cannonball in my chest. Lie down, boy, lie oh. down. I wonder. <coughs> Don't try it, Ellen, unless these guys are a couple of fools. Well, that's just the point. If they are a couple of coolies, will they know what I'm doing? And do they care? Don't try it, Alan. Do you want to die now? At least I wouldn't have to answer any questions. Oh, sit down, boy. What happened, Paul? Not now, Alan. I must know! What happened? I kept my mouth shut. Has anyone got a cigarette? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. I know, Alan. I know why we've been sent in here. How do you know? The Major told me. Told you what? Well, he intends to... No, Paul! I think they've got a right to know, sir. Come on, out with it. He intends to barter our lives for information. He sent us in here to... Well, to make it harder for Alan. If he doesn't talk... But he can't talk. Of course he can't. So the longer we're here... Well, it isn't going to be easy for any of us. I see. It's funny, isn't it? You never think it's going to be you. All right, get on with it! That sense exactly what he wants. We've got to make things easier for Alan. Oh! It's like a flipping cannonball, Sarge. Thanks for nursing me, Sarge. Alan, whatever happens, you cannot, you must not think of us. No. Don't think of us. You can't, Max. I know, I know. That's what makes it so bloody funny. We must all be prepared to die for the cause. For nothing. That isn't true, Max. Isn't it? Lose a limb. Or your eyes, or your sanity. You'll find out. Your grateful country will reward you with a stinking pension. Better to be like Wilson there. Dead and forgotten. I think the war dead are remembered. Ha. <laughs> Some gold paint peeling off the roll of honor, eh? How long does that last? Each generation must honor its own dead. Oh, yes. Of course. The public conscience, eh? Sixpence for a poppy and two minutes silence once a year. Yesterday's enemy laying a wreath to honor the dead his country killed. You're twisting it, Max. You're making it sound ugly. It is ugly. 
Well? All right, then. You, Captain, will remain where you are. The rest of you gentlemen will accompany my guards. If only I could believe this will make some difference. Take a good look at that man there and learn a lesson from him. Because you don't measure up to the top of his boots. You, priest. Have you nothing to say? Nothing I think that you would understand. Now your turn, Captain. May I remind you that two of those men, the priest and the war correspondent, are non-combatants? Let us not waste time with trivialities. Those men's lives are not trivialities. Ah, at last. A point that I have been trying to impress upon you. I can't give you information I don't possess. That is what we are about to investigate. You will now go to the window and look out. Please, do as I say. I can have you dragged outside to watch, but I'm sure it will distress your men to see you struggling with my guards. My sergeant has certain instructions, Captain. And their lies now hang on every word you utter. You will answer the following questions. What is the name of your brigade commander? He's dead. What was his name? Wilmont, Brigadier Wilmont. What were your divisional headquarters when you last heard? At a place called Kaitan. What was your brigade? The fourth. What did your division consist of? Three infantry brigades and an anti-tank regiment. You will now tell me what happened to the Japanese colonel. You heard me, Captain. I asked you a question. And I don't know what you're talking about. So, in an effort to make me believe you're telling the truth, you give me a lot of facts you know I can check. You also knew they would be of no use to me. Did you think that way you would convince me that you had nothing to hide? I will wait exactly two more minutes. Then I shall execute your men and turn you over to my headquarters for interrogation. You are a good soldier, Captain. A man I would prefer to fight with, not against. Two minutes. Come on!
is what I would have done. Sunray leader to Achilles. Sunray leader to Achilles. You're too far north. Your nearest contact is A Company. Sunray leader to Achilles. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Hello. Sunray leader on emergency. Sunray leader on emergency. Stand by all you can do. This message is transmitted from Divisional Commander General Cantrick. Message follows. Quote. At this grave hour, at this time of crisis for us all, your magnificent fighting qualities, your fortitude, strength, Fighting a determined enemy, you have upheld the fine traditional qualities of the British Army. I know you will understand me when I say that I'm proud of your forbearance, the loyalty, and the humane discipline shown by all units under my command. Signed, General Cantrick. Message ends. Sunray leader to all units. Commence normal transmission. Out. <laughs>